for the groundbreaking announcement by Elon Musk as he reveals the highly anticipated launch date for Flight 5 of Starship. In his latest update on July 5, Elon Musk raised the thrill even higher by sharing the highlight video of Flight 4 with the bold statement. Flight 5 in 4 weeks. It is that time again my friends, we are watching everything rapidly evolve as we begin ticking. Off everything needed for Starship Flight Test 5 and, as you would expect, it has been. Absolutely action-packed. Along with totally new and amazing scenes from Flight 4 just. Released, we have Falcon 9 action and also movement from Blue Origin. Elon Musk has just unveiled the launch date for Flight 5, promising significant advancements. For Starship. Don't miss out on witnessing the captivating advancements and epic journey of Flight 5 that's set to revolutionize space travel. Stay tuned as the countdown begins for this monumental event. Join us as we delve into the future with Flight 5, a mission like never before. Today marks one month since the launch of Flight 4, a mission that brought significant progress for SpaceX, including the successful landing of Starship's two stages. Naturally, everyone is eager to know when the next flight will take place. On July 5, Elon Musk added to the excitement by reposting the highlight video of Flight 4 with the statement, Flight 5 in four weeks. How exciting! If Flight 5 launches as predicted, it'll be around the end of July or early August. This marks a significant reduction in turnaround time between flights down to just two months. From the three-month gap between Flight 3 and 4. Last week with the test tank having been lifted off and placed back onto its transport stand and just after midnight it started moving towards the road and was escorted down highway for under the cover of darkness. It arrived at the Sanchez site less than an hour later and was simply stowed away in the rocket garden at one of the locations where they usually keep full-size to boosters. Elon Musk's earlier hint, aiming to try this in late July, adds to the anticipation. So now that the launch mount was clear, SpaceX took this opportunity to test out the gas supply systems feeding into the Raptor Quick Disconnects or Raptor QDs. As a reminder, these smaller Quick Disconnects hook up to the outer ring of 20 Raptor engines on these super heavy boosters and provide the high-pressure gases to start those engines. Regarding the prototype, after Flight 4, S-30 is in the process of replacing the entire heat shield and adding an ablative layer in high bay. This is expected to help ship have a completely successful re-entry, creating the best bases for the subsequent landing. Currently, the S-30 has completed cryogenic and static fire tests. After completing the changes to the heat shield system, this ship may undergo another static fire test. This time, possibly at the Massey test site, to test the reliability of the new heat shield. After that, saves quite a lot of booster dry mass. Given they don't need all of those many COPV tanks on board, they still obviously need some tanks for the inner engines for boost back and landing burns, but yeah, why would SpaceX be testing these Raptor QDs so much? After that, It'll go to the launch pad to combine with B-12, all of which taking place during the wet dress rehearsal. Speaking of B-12, it has quickly completed the cryogenic test. Next up, it'll undergo a static fire test, which might occur in the coming days, as SpaceX has scheduled extended road closures from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on the 9th of July, with back updates on the 10th and 11th. After all, with that gas feeding directly into the turbo pumps of those engines, even the tiniest debris would cause a disaster. So with all of that out of the way, SpaceX got back to work preparing the orbital pad for the imminent arrival of Booster 12. Indeed, it was time to kick off its engine testing. Campaign At the start of the week, scaffolding was once again installed on the launch mount as crews worked in and around that area. Sometimes we capture a photo that just so beautifully illustrates how gigantic everything is. Another great humans forced scale perspective. They're under the launch mount. Following these tests, B-12 is likely to be transported to the build site for the installation of hot staging equipment, representing significant system upgrades. It'll then return to the launch pad to complete the final step, the wet dress rehearsal, alongside S-30. Starship's preparations for Flight 5 are shaping up with much anticipation surrounding the potential catch of Super Heavy B-12. This is a great procedure to ensure that 
there is absolutely no debris left in all of these lines. Again statements from SpaceX's Starbase General Manager, Kathy Luters, suggest that the catching attempt might not happen in Flight 5, potentially waiting for the new launch. Tower to be completed. Looking higher up, a huge focus was back on the ship Quick Disconnect. Not. Long ago we talked about a crane lifting it back into place, but the actuators themselves actually weren't attached yet. At the time they basically just moved the quick disconnect plate away to ensure that they could fix up the actuators and those systems. Once complete and ready to once again hold the quick disconnect, the crane was raised and attached to the umbilical. Next the crane connected up to one of the main flexible cryogenic hoses. Once it had been disconnected by the team up there, it was lifted out and then a few hours later. A replacement hose was on the way up and that was quickly hooked into place. So with all of this space being cleared here very soon, it is going to be interesting to watch that area evolve again. Perhaps they are going to fit the now two horizontal methane storage tanks staged at the Sanchez site right here. Speaking of a new era at Starbase, over to the exciting work around the second orbital launch tower. There were a few hiccups to address it seemed. However, a recent video were posted by Musk highlights SpaceX's determination. Alongside familiar Flight 4 highlights, SpaceX included a simulation of the launch tower, signaling its crucial role in the upcoming flights. First, one of the tower interfacing pieces that connects the tower. Segments to the base was simply lifted off. Soon more were removed and even a few days later they weren't yet back. We suspect that they might have just had to readjust everything here to ensure that it was all perfectly level. After all, any minor alignment problem down. Here makes a gigantic difference at the top of the tower. They teased, next up, hinting at significant developments for Flight 5. The video also portrayed the Super Heavy's return to the launch tower, with the tagline Flight 5, indicating SpaceX's objectives. It was now time to commence the rollout of the tower segments. As we can clearly see on the stand, this indeed is the first module. Now one super intriguing thing that we can see now is that parts of the main cryogenic pipes going up towards the ship look to be sporting a new type of installation that we haven't seen much at Starbase. SpaceX are looking into these for those key areas for the second pad. These vacuum insulated pipes don't have simple limited insulation wrapped around. No, they instead have a secondary stainless steel pipe with a vacuum in between. A similar principle which is used to insulate stainless steel bottles as well. The preparation to install the first segment or module continued. Along nicely with lifting eyes already being installed. It is so great to see that this is happening now to ensure the second pad is going to climb fast. Certainly seems a lot. Faster than it took for the first tower. That already includes the systems to go around. It. We are of course expecting a new design for a flame trench of some sort. In the tour with Tim, Elon confirmed that this will undergo a rapid redesign from the current water-cooled steel plate system. It is most likely not one that we see at masses, but instead more closely resembling the trench that Blue Origin have installed over at Launch Complex 36 or even what SpaceX uses at Launch Complex 39A and the other Falcon pads. They really do need to beef this up because we are already seeing hints of the booster thrust increasing not just due to Raptor 3 numbers being seen a while back, but it is looking more and more like a total of 35 Raptor engines may be the accepted design for future boosters. If they may end up fixing the second inner ring so that they don't gimbal, move those closer to the outer set and then give more gimbal room to the central remaining 5 engines. That would be less hardware on board and would probably give them all the gimbal control that they need. Now we were expecting that first tower segment to be lifted towards the end of the week, but with Hurricane Barrel entering the Gulf of Mexico and heading almost directly towards Starbase the decision was made to bring down the cranes and ride this out. Despite some uncertainty, there's speculation that the super heavy catching attempt could still be attempted in Flight 5. SpaceX concluded the video with a blurred scene, leaving much to be unveiled officially during the flight. Additionally, SpaceX released a detailed one-minute video showcasing the booster's flight, navigation, acceleration, and integration into the chopstick cached system, showcasing impressive engineering. The excitement is palpable. Bring on Flight 5! Of course, SpaceX will need to file another launch modification with the FAA to proceed. With Elon Musk's ambitious timeline only a month away, updates on this front may emerge. 
Soon. Once confirmed, expectations for Flight 5 will soar, achieving a historic first, such as catching Super Heavy and successfully landing Starship in pristine condition would reaffirm SpaceX's technological prowess. A successful flight sets the stage for Flight 6, where both stages could return to Starbase, marking a significant milestone as the first fully reusable rocket in history. To support this, SpaceX is actively constructing a new launch tower. Following the completion of the tower base, SpaceX has begun rolling in the first segment for stacking, with subsequent segments still set to arrive gradually. Recently, the last two segments and the chopstick arrived at the port of Brownsville and are expected to be transported to Starbase soon. According to the latest FAA update, the first six segments will be stacked in Configuration 1. By July 27, followed by completion in Configuration 2 by August 15. If the late July or early August schedule for Flight 5, good luck to everyone in the path with that in the coming days. Next up, let's dive into our final bit of updates concerning Blue Origin and Stoke Space. Recently the U.S. Space Force has included both Blue Origin and Stoke Space technologies in its lineup of launch providers, eligible to vie for rapid turnaround, small satellite missions under the Orbital Services Program for contract. These two choices by the USSF are certainly intriguing. Blue Origin's addition to OSP-4 follows closely on its selection for the national security. Space Launch Phase 3 Lane 1 Procurement, indicating confidence from the Space Force and the readiness of its new Glenn rocket for payload launches in the coming year. Stoke Space, a newer player in the field, recently achieved a milestone with the first successful hot-fire test of its reusable rocket engine. The company is aiming for its inaugural orbital test launch in 2025, marking significant progress in its development timeline. OSP-4, an indefinite delivery slash indefinite quantity, or IDIQ, contract, was initiated by the Air Force in 2019 to harness emerging commercial launch capabilities. IDIC contracts enable the government to procure an indefinite quantity of goods or services over a set period, issuing orders as needed. The Space Force's small launch division, based at Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque, New Mexico, has so far allocated seven missions under the OSP-4 contract, totaling over $190 million. This program focuses on missions with payloads weighing 400 pounds or more, requiring providers to be launched ready within 12 to 24 months from the task order award. The overall IDIQ contract has a ceiling of $986 million through October of 2028. However, both Blue Origin and Stoke Space face a significant challenge. Neither has achieved orbit yet. The upcoming small and straightforward missions under OSP-4 will test their capabilities in the competitive space industry, offering an opportunity to demonstrate their readiness and reliability in the space race. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time